if you read books on steam locomotive performance, you'll hear people going on about drawbar horsepower, equivalent drawbar horsepower, and indicated horsepower. So what does all that mean? I'm sure you don't need me to remind you this, but force, energy and power are different things. And the useful thing to remember here is that energy is force times distance and power is force times velocity. So if you know how fast a, a locomotive's going and how, how high the pull is at the drawbar, you can work out the drawbar power. There are three things that you can measure on a steam locomotive. You can measure the pressure in the cylinders that goes up and down as the pistons go back and forth. You can measure the pull of the locomotive on its train, or the drawbar, so the drawbar pull, and you can measure the velocity. The steam pressure in the cylinder used to be measured with a little device called an indicator. So indicated horsepower is simply horsepower measured using an indicator. The indicator would draw a loop showing the steam pressure as the piston goes back and forth. The area of the loop is proportional to work done, energy. And if you know the number of piston strokes per second and the number of cylinders, you can calculate the indicated horsepower. The graph shows two loops because the cylinders are double acting. Steam acts on both sides of the piston. You can measure how hard the locomotive is pulling on the train using a very large spring, usually inside something called a dyna dynamometer car. So this pull or force is called the drawbar pull because you measure it at the drawbar that connects the locomotive to the rest of the train. And as power is pull or force times velocity, you can convert drawbar pull to drawbar power, DHP. So not all the power in the cylinders, the indicated horsepower, gets to be power at the drawbar because some of it is lost on the way and it's all lost in different forms of friction. So uh, between the piston and the wheels, there's going to be friction. Uh, with all the wheels, uh, all they will have bearings uh, on the locomotive and tender, there'll be friction. Uh, there's friction between the wheel and the rail and, and losses. And then there's the air friction. So the, the locomotive is a vehicle and it needs power to overcome its own air resistance. So I'm going to call that frictional horsepower, uh, although you'll find in other places people use different terms. So um, the faster you go, the higher frictional horsepower becomes. And generally, the larger the locomotive, the higher the frictional, frictional horsepower. Larger locomotives have uh, more air resistance and heavier locomotives have larger bearing surfaces and so lose more friction. This graph shows pull or force or tractive effort against velocity. Power in the cylinders, indicated horsepower, is roughly proportional to the amount of steam the boiler can produce. So once the locomotive is moving fast enough for the cylinders to be able to use all the steam the boiler can provide, then indicated power is roughly constant, above about 20 miles an hour. It depends on the locomotive. Below that speed, indicated pull is roughly constant or, or slightly declining. So you get the following curve for indicated pull against speed. Now, as speed increases, the gap between indicated power and drawbar power, and that gap is frictional power, increases. So the gap between the solid line and the dash line gets bigger. So this is the same curve as the previous slide, but this time it's power against velocity, not pull. Um, and you'll see for the, um, the opening section up to around 20 miles an hour, pull is constant and uh, indicated power is increasing with speed and then above that above that uh, speed power is constant and you'll see that that gap between drawbar power and indicated power gets larger and larger as speed increases and more of the indicated power is lost in friction so one thing to remember is that when we talk about locomotive power and drawbar horsepower if you're comparing different locomotives 
you need to think what's the speed because you can see for this particular locomotive if it produces 600 drawbar horsepower at 40 miles an hour that's nothing special but if it was to produce 600 drawbar horsepower at 100 miles an hour that would be quite something so you can't it's very hard to measure to compare different locomotives at different speeds if you're using drawbar horsepower and actually for that it'd be better to use indicated horsepower now everything i've been saying is based on the assumption that the locomotive is moving at constant speed on level track so what if it's not So this is where we start talking about equivalent drawbar horsepower. Now, when the locomotive is accelerating or when it's going up a hill, some of the locomotive's power is needed either to accelerate its own mass or to raise its own mass against gravity. So there's less drawbar horsepower. So a locomotive that is producing a particular indicated power at a particular speed Will have a lower drawbar horsepower when it is accelerating or going up a gradient. Equivalent drawbar horsepower is the drawbar horsepower that the locomotive would produce at constant speed on level track. The heavier the locomotive, the greater the difference between drawbar power and equivalent drawbar power. The power required by the trailing load increases with speed, so at lower speeds the locomotive will be accelerating, it'll have excess power, and EDHP will be greater than DHP. At higher speeds, the EDHP can be less than the DHP, either because the locomotive is going downhill or because it's decelerating. This graph was created by Sam Al at Swindon in the early 50s. It is based on tests with a King Class locomotive. Uh, three of the curves are for the tractive effort of the locomotive. Tractive effort is the pull. And three of them are for the power of the locomotive. So indicated, equivalent drawbar and drawbar. Uh, there's also a curve for the total coach resistance. Uh, the, that's the tractive effort required to move the coaches. That gets higher with speed because friction and especially air resistance increases with speeds. The speed at which the curve for the trailing load resistance intersects the drawbar tractive effort is the balancing speed for level track. Below that, equivalent drawbar horsepower is more than drawbar horsepower. Above that speed, equivalent drawbar horsepower is less than drawbar horsepower. If I was to ask you what's the formula to calculate the force needed to accelerate a mass, you might say that's easy, F equals MA. But for a wheeled vehicle, that's not quite true because the wheels have to be accelerated. They have to rotate faster and that also requires energy. So actually, the force needed to accelerate a wheeled vehicle, like a locomotive or a coach, is about 5 to 10% greater than it would be if you just used F equals MA. So what's the best measure to compare locomotive performance? So the good thing about drawbar horsepower is it's real. That's actually the power exerted by the locomotive on its train. But if you're looking at locomotives at different speeds, it's not a good comparison because it's easy to produce high drawbar horsepower at low speeds and hard to do it at high speeds. And it doesn't help you when you're comparing locomotives which aren't traveling at constant speed or on level track. Uh, in comparison, Equivalent drawbar horsepower is good for comparing locomotives which are not at constant speed or on level track. So two different locomotives climbing two different hills, um, you can make a comparison which has got the greater equivalent drawbar horsepower. However, it does flatter heavier locomotives. So if you've got two locomotives um, with the same drawbar power climbing a hill, the heavier locomotive will have a higher equivalent drawbar horsepower and if you put it on level track it will be more powerful but while it's climbing the hill it's no more powerful than the smaller locomotive and then indicated horsepower 
it is good for if you want to compare different locomotives at different speeds and if they're traveling uh, if they're not traveling at constant speed or if they're not on level track however again it does flatter heavier locomotives because a big heavy locomotive needs to have a high indicated power just to overcome its its own higher friction If you want to convert drawbar horsepower to equivalent drawbar horsepower, these are the formula to use. If the locomotive is going downhill or slowing down, the forces will be negative. So don't be surprised if you sometimes get a minus number. If none of that made any sense, this worked example might help. Well, thank you for your company. I hope that's made some sense and I haven't managed to make it even more complex. Goodbye.